four amazing chefs are about to bravely march into the chopped kitchen. They all hail from the ranks of America's military. Let's meet them. First up, there's Chef Robbie Myers. I'm a retired Army senior food operations sergeant, and I live in Adams Center, New York. Adams is small town USA. Adams is one stoplight. Adams is a high school. Adams is, you know, your corner store literally shuts down at 10 o'clock at night. Adams is the epitome of small town USA. I have six beautiful kids uh, from the ages of two to 15. They are my light at the end of the tunnel, I guess. They, they keep me going. We met at the mall. <laughs> um, we did not meet at the mall. He used to like to tell people that story because he didn't like saying that we met online. I think it was hot or not. Where you like basically rape people on their looks. It was just a horrible place to, to meet someone, but. Uh... We talked for a while and then there was a few phone calls and then we met in person, but I had him pick me up a few blocks away from where I lived because hey, what if he was a weirdo, right? I didn't want him to know where I lived, but the rest is history. Where would you be without your wife? Dead. I wouldn't be here. He was sent to Afghanistan in early 2006. Um, after a couple of months there, they had come to you know, the base where he was at and said that they needed some people to go stand up a base in the Korangal Valley. And Rob, along with a couple of his soldiers, had volunteered to take on that job. I sent those guys because, I, not because they were available, but because those were the guys that I could trust to make stuff happen up there and do it the right way. This is Army Staff Sergeant Robbie Myers, stationed at the Korangal Outpost in Afghanistan. Like if you'd ever seen the Korangal Valley, or the Korangal Outpost, it, it's a hole. There's no other way to put it. And that was our life on a daily basis. You you know, we were always being sh shot at, with small arms, rockets, I, I mean, everything that, that's out there, we were, it was you know, being shot at us. And uh, finally, we, we got arranged far enough where we could actually bring a mess kitchen up there. We flew it in and, and they were cooking and Robbie was out there throwing down with the rest of the guys, putting the defense positions in. You're always told you're a soldier first, and you know, your your number one priority is, is being a soldier, and I, you know, I always agreed. If I am in a combat zone and I'm not able to do my damn job, and I, I'm sitting there watching, you know, my battle buddies get, you know, uh, into some pretty rough firefights, and, and uh, I'm sitting here, just twiddling my thumbs, I'm going to do whatever I can to, to get into that fight. I was awarded my ARCOM for Valor for, we had uh, one of the deputy commanding generals coming out to visit. And when they landed, yeah, all hell broke loose. And I ran over and I got the uh, general and, and some other folks to, uh, to a safe place. Ran across the LZ, got on the, the 50 cal, and I started landing suppressive fire. Reloading! But it just, it didn't feel right. It fell out of place being given an attaboy for, for killing someone, I guess. I mean, it, I've seen people do greater things, get nothing, so. So, Chef, when did you leave the service? Just got out about four months ago. Been on two deployments to Afghanistan. He went back to Afghanistan, this time to Kunar province, in January of 2009. The second deployment, it, it wasn't nowhere near as, as rough as the first deployment, but the level of anxiety that was associated with how much indirect fire we received. We're still taking indirect. We're still taking small arms. We have to get him off. Rockets were being shot at us, like almost, it seemed like daily. And knowing that in a, a blink of an eye, one of those rounds can land at your feet and you're done. Uh, that really did a number to me. So I, I leaned on alcohol and I, I used and abused alcohol like crazy. I think everybody came back with some demons. 
sooner or later, you know, you sit down and you, you do a self-assessment and I, you know, I did one and I, I talked, talking to Robbie, you know, he did one and, uh, you know, it's just not worth it in the end. It's easier to go find some help than to piss your life away through a bottle or through a needle or through pills. Bobby got the uh, med board while we were still stationed over in Germany. And it was literally like, you're going home. And it happened fast. We got home, I, I had nothing in terms of prospective jobs or anything lined up. Uh, staying with my, my mother-in-law, they had a, a tiny little two bedroom house. And at the time there was us and four of the kids were with them in that two bedroom house and it was just you know that quickly got me thinking you know I, I got to figure out a way to get my family into our own home. A buddy had sent me a link the Food Network guys were doing an episode of Chop that was kind of uh, paying tribute to veterans and service men and women. I knew when he applied that he would get accepted. I have nothing but faith in his abilities to just take the whole culinary world by storm. I could give him a bag of oatmeal and two bananas and the guys, would, he'd have a meal out of it. I mean, he would throw down. And they ask you before you go on to the set if you're 100% because they don't want any excuses. And uh, I couldn't smell a thing, couldn't taste a single thing. And they asked me, I said, I'm good to go, let's do this. Just, it was all cooking from kind of memory or by feel. I was in the mindset to not make it. I kept telling myself that I'd just be happy to get to the last round. Chef Jacoby, Chef Robbie, Army versus Navy. A well-established rivalry. But who makes better desserts? But Steve. 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 So, whose dish is on the chopping block? Chef Jacoby, you've been chopped. And that means, Chef Robbie Myers, that you are the chopped champion and the winner of our special military tribute competition. Also, you're leaving here with a check for $10,000. <laughs> Congratulations. Bravo. Nice job. I needed this, my family needed it, so it feels amazing to have been given the honor of being asked to come here. The honor is ours. Ever since I've been medically retired from the Army, it, it's been a, a big struggle. But winning CHOP is the start of a new chapter in my life. It's the dream come true. Since I was on CHOP, uh, I was contacted by a production company out of Los Angeles. The name of the company is Television 101. Uh, they approached me about doing a very specific show that would highlight veterans and veterans' stories. You don't hear the good stories uh, about veterans. You always hear the bad ones, or you hear the struggles, and you know you don't hear those victories. And uh, I think the biggest problem that we face getting out of the service and, and transitioning back into the civilian world is we lose our sense of purpose. You know, we don't have a mission. And I think accepting the mission of helping each other out is the best way to, to push forward for any veteran. Rob is a dreamer, and he will forever dream big. And I think he's one of those people who, you know, once he achieves this, then he's got to set his sights on something more. Uh, we're we're going to highlight a veteran-owned business and really just expose the, the world to some of the finest men and women this country has, you know, to offer. That's Robbie in a nutshell. That's the kind of guy he is, and it doesn't make any difference who you are. He's going to do what he has to do to help you out. Robbie, you are, are well deserving of this award. There is no one more deserving than you. I don't think you deserve this award. I know that you deserve this award because there couldn't possibly be anybody out there who gives more than what you do. Selfless service, it's, it's the epitome of what you are. You're, you're the guy that is going to just give it, and you're going to give it until you can't give it anymore. I couldn't be more proud of you, and I love you. 
for everything that you ever were and everything that you are and everything that I know you will be. Love you, brother.